Matt, look out! What's the best part about being a vampire? Feel like you could do anything? Be anyone? And the worst? Ah, uh, you know the one. Anger becomes rage. You're sad, you're in despair. Grief, loss can cripple you. Where is she? No, Damon, Where is she? wait. You need to know, when Jeremy brought Elena in here earlier tonight, her injuries were worse than I let on. I helped her. She needed my help. You what? I know that I love you, Stefan. My future, our lives together, those were things I was supposed to deal with as they came along. I was supposed to grow up. I decided if I want to have kids and start a family. I don't want to be a vampire, Stefan. I never wanted to be one. You're about to get really freaky. It's never going to be the same, Elena. No. You feed or you die. There is no door number three. The spirits won't be happy with you. I'm done getting pushed around by all of you. You weren't there the day Elena looked me in the eye and told me she absolutely never wanted this. Then you shouldn't have let her die. I never meant for her to die. And now the world has one more quarterback. Bravo, brother. Well, how about that? Hey, I'm Deborah Birnbaum, the editor-in-chief of TV Guide Magazine and a huge Vampire Diaries fan, I'm not ashamed to admit. Well, every once in a while, I come up with a good idea. Every once in a while. So I've just got one question for you. Are you Team Damon? Or Team Stefan? I could do this all day. You can get your very own copy of our special Comic-Con issue at the Warner Brothers booth, along with the other covers, Supernatural, Fringe, and the Big Bang Theory. And yes, they flip too. They'll also be on sale at newsstands after Comic-Con. Well, there's one thing you can say about the Vampire Diaries. The finales never disappoint. What a roller coaster. I was in tears, and gasping for breath, and then suddenly, so was Elena. I mean, we all knew it was coming, but who knew it was coming like that? So here to explain it all, and believe me, we've got questions. We've got the cast and executive producers. So what do you say we bring them out? He sees dead people. Stephen R. McQueen, who plays Jeremy Gilbert. Hey. Thank you. It was a good birthday. <laughs> he was Elena's first love, Zach Roerig, who plays Matt Donovan. Ow. He is a vampire who's got some serious explaining to do. Paul Wesley plays Stefan Salvatore. a lot of people. <laughs> Flattered. Hi. She's going to be feeling a little bit different this fall. Nina Dobra plays Elena Gilbert. He's, he's the vampire with a broken heart. 
Ian Summerhalder, please, Damon Salvatore. Howdy. She's the evil genius behind all those plot twists, executive producer Julie Plack. He's been a werewolf, a hybrid, and now I think he's a little bit possessed. Michael Trevino plays Tyler Lockwood. He's the master plotter behind all of this, and your moderator for this afternoon, executive producer Kevin Williamson. Welcome, everybody. Oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> my God. people. God. Thank you, guys. Thank you. <laughs> I, you know, I remember we came back here. You know, we were here season one, and we hadn't launched yet. You know, we hadn't been on the air. And we were in a smaller room, and they just showed our little pilot, and we were that little Twilight knockoff. <laughs> and which we were happy to be, let me tell you. <laughs> and and um, now, four years back, seeing all you guys, I mean, it, it's very emotional for us. I don't think I'm making that up. But we're back. Season four just got underway. We've been shooting for a week now. Yeah. Yeah. We're in it. How does it feel to be back, guys? Feels good. That's why really good. It's only a week, so we're still in good moods. Yeah, just perfect. It does. And, yeah, and we're, I mean, good. we're, we're not six months in. We're still refreshed and we're still uh, happy to see each other. Haven't punched Ian in the face yet. Not yet. And, and we just got the second script and it's pretty damn good. Hey. Okay. Right. Oh yeah. Well, you know, why don't we just jump in? I asked. I opened this up to Twitter. Said, please give me some questions. Let me help me out here because I'm really suck at moderating. <laughs> and I got like a. I literally I had like 150 pages. I printed out of Twitter questions. Um, wow. And so, um, you know, they ranged from everywhere, from, I'm gonna try to get to A to Z. So why don't we just jump right in. Let's just start with um, season four. I think that was the main one. Where is this episode, where is this season going? And I'm gonna start with actually Julie Pleck and say, give, tease us, give us some stuff. Let us know what's in store for Elena, Stelena, and Delena. Let us know. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, season four, you know, we've been in the writer's room for a couple months now. We got a long stretch, more than usual, to prepare and to think about it with all the writers. And one of the greatest things that we discovered while we were putting stories together is that everything just feels so fresh. It feels new. It feels, it feels familiar in all the right ways, and it feels different in all the in all the best ways too. There's there's this wonderful core of character for everybody to explore. Everyone, obviously, Elaine is going through a huge change, and Damon and Stefan are going to have to deal with that change with her and for her. Um, but all the characters are really, as we gear up for the rest of uh, a senior year towards. Uh, you know, graduation for the kids that don't go to school, uh, then uh, it's a lot of really good, deep, emotional, and twisted stuff. And uh, so we're really psyched about it. So, you know, now that we're in season four and, and we're sort of watched all these characters grow and evolve and who they started with and who they are today, you know, I'm staring right... Let's start right here. Oh, Tyler boy. Lockwood. Tell me... <laughs> yeah. Tell me... Ow! Season one... Where you, is Tyler Lockwood from season one and who Tyler Lockwood is today? Exactly. Where did you ever, what did you think of him when he was in season one? What did you think? Well, all like? right. I mean, everybody in this, in, in, in this room should know season one, Tyler. Oh, man, I even despised the character. He was just a douche, a douche bag, <laughs> just a complete a-hole. And then oh, there was just man. no forgiving, That's like, awesome. there was no other, like, quality about him. But... I, I, I'll be honest with you, I, I did know in season one eventually, and it was in the books, that um, I was to become this werewolf. And I knew that was a plan all along, but uh, to, to answer your question, now that we're in season four, I've actually been really, really blessed. If you look, I've been like four different characters. I mean, I was this douchebag jock who just beat up people for no reason. And then in season two, you know, I activate this werewolf trait, and so I had that to play with. Um, season three, I become this hybrid, the first successful hybrid from Klaus. And 
now. <laughs> <laughs> now, mm. well, it's I get to play around with. Yeah, uh, it's a season of changes, and yeah. I, you know, with, and that's with Klaus the thing that I think bit. is so interesting is that everything's changing. Like Julie just said, they're going the the idea of their future in high school and what's all in store for them. And I think the one new person who's having the biggest change is sitting right smack in the middle, Elena. <laughs> if you are in the middle. What do you think? What do you think about Elena's journey this season? And like, what's going to be new about her? What, how are you approaching that role? Tell us a little bit about what it's going to be, what's in store for everyone with regard to Nina Dobrev and Elena. <laughs> well, um, it's always kind of been, between the two characters, Elena and Catherine, it's always been fun for me to make them so different because one was a vampire and she was bad. And then Elena was a girl and she was, you know, sweet Elena. So how do you make Elena the vampire version of herself that's different from Catherine but still true to her own fo It's going to be tricky and I'm going to be discovering it as we go along and I think she's going to be defined by her experiences. You know, we all grow and become these these people throughout our lives because of the experiences that we that we have and um I mean, Elena's had some pretty crazy experiences. <laughs> um, a lot of near-death experiences. Now, actually, she, she dies and comes back as a vampire. And um, I think everything is going to be heightened, and she's constantly going to be struggling with herself and what she is now and the fact that she never really wanted to be that. Well, and now you get the triangle to the left and right of you. <laughs> now, Mr. Ian, uh -oh. summer holder. Uh oh. You know, you you started, you came on, you broke onto the scene in season one as the villain, and then in season two, you sort of, you know, no matter how many people you killed, we sort of couldn't turn the audience against you to save our lives. And no, we tried. <laughs> we tried. We tried. We, we tried. tried. I mean, we we had the guy snap the neck of the brother <laughs> of the <laughs> leading character, and you still <laughs> love the guy. <laughs> well, the. What's in store this journey? What's your favorite part? Like this, you've got a journey. You went from good to bad to good to bad. You walk this balancing, this tightrope. What's that like? Where are you going this season? Tell us. Talk to us. What do you like? What do you uh, want to play? What are you going to play? Well, I mean, I think in the conversations that I've had with Julie, um, you know, these characters are wildly complex individuals that have spanned, you know, over a century of time. And, and uh, Damon, uh, you would have thought at 170 plus years old, would probably think before he does something. He still doesn't. Um, he just doesn't. But this metamorphosis of this guy, I think, ultimately is, at this point, he tried. Season two, he, he tried. He tried to do what everyone wanted him to do. He tried to be something everyone wanted him to be. And bottom line is, he is not. He's not a nice guy. Yes, he has a heart at times, but he's not. And the reality of it is, is what Julie and I talked about, is this year was him saying, you know what? I did everything you wanted me to do. I tried everything you wanted me to try. And it didn't work. So, Mr. Ripper Man over there, how exactly <laughs> does that, how does that philosophy apply to Stefan? You know what I mean? I mean, you were a really good hero, and then you kind of went back to who you were born to be, which was this, you have this problem. How I always, are you this year? I mean, I always, you know, lean towards the dark side. I mean, when, when I got to play the Ripper season three, for me, it was, um, it was such a relief in a way because, you know, I felt like always oh, season one, season two, Stefan was such a good guy, so good to a flaw that I thought, well, there's no way that this could all be based in just the, the, the truth of Stefan. The truth of Stefan is he's so dark and he's so twisted and he's so dangerous that he covers it up with this sense of um, <laughs> goodwill. But in reality, this darkness is, is, is so intense that uh, he doesn't know what to do with it. And so he just decides to rip people's heads off. 